Trump made a statement about Liz Cheney, who's a warmonger and a partisan hack. She's a radical war hawk. Let's yep. put her with a rifle standing there with nine barrels shooting at her, okay? Let's see how she feels about it. But she's a stupid person. The women who refuse to accept a future without reproductive freedom. It is in the men who support them. Liz Cheney and the Democrats scrambling at the last minute to shove a new hoax down America's gullet. They are trying to take this statement out of context. So at the Trump Tucker event in Glendale, Arizona, Trump made a statement about Liz Cheney, who's a warmonger and a partisan hack who has castigated an entire category of innocent Americans and imprisoned many of them or contributed to the imprisonment of them. She, of course, is not at the DOJ, but her handiwork on on the J6 committee has resulted in many people being incarcerated or facing incarceration as they're being prosecuted by the corrupt DOJ, utilizing her entire book report that she created on the January 6th select committee. So Trump has been talking about her and I was at this event last night. It was incredible. A lot of amazing patriots there. The MAGA energy was through the roof. Your boy didn't even get to bed until 1230. I should be in a coma right now, but I'm glowing because we're making America great again. Rah, powerful, baby. And so Trump was there and I got to tell you the energy last night was wild I don't know how Trump does it it's really a phenomenon and he was in I think three different states yesterday so Albuquerque Nevada and then Arizona and this event didn't wrap up until about 10 30 I don't think maybe 10 30 11 30 11 by the time we got out of the parking lot by the time I got home it was about 11 30 then I had to unwind because I was like YMCA all night yeah baby gonna make America great again and it was just a fun night so you had to kind of you know take her down off the energy there and it was amazing but my point is that Trump had been to three separate states on that one day do you know how much energy that takes to go to three separate states I remember when I was practicing law I would be in four or five different courts in a day right even three courts is a lot for a lawyer because that's like two different courts in the morning docket you have a lunch break you go to a different a third court for the afternoon docket it gets a lot for a lawyer most lawyers don't go to court regularly right criminal defense attorneys are kind of in court every day but other attorneys are a lot of transactional stuff. They're in, you know, doing contracts and stuff like that. But some attorneys are in court and three courts in a day can be a lot. Five courts in a day, right? I do that. And sometimes the courts are right next to each other. So that's not a big deal. But I mean, if you have to go across town, go over here to West Valley, East Valley, got to go up north and that type of thing, that's a separate thing. But if the courts are in the same building, sometimes there's in Arizona, there's four courts, oftentimes in our justice centers. So you have four courts in the same building. So it sounds really cool. I got four courts today. You're like, bro, they're across the hall from each other. Okay. So that's not what I'm talking about. Now that requires energy or you can relate to this no matter what you do right go to four different places and like put on a different event or do we do two live streams here a day sitting on our butts in this chair it's like oh it's a lot of work a lot of stuff to talk about trump is flying around the different states okay it's a lot of work and he just kept going last night and man he could have gone for another hour i swear if they didn't tucker didn't like cut him off he could have gone for another hour he was vibing so it's honestly it's i don't know how he does it the dude's in his 70s and it's crazy so i just had to comment on it i'm going what the heck is this dude made of it's and to watch it, he's not even slowing down. He's firing on all cylinders. So anyways, he was talking about Liz Cheney and it was a great conversation because he finally called her out. Well, he's called her out many times. But last night he got into a bunch of stuff that we're excited that he got into because we talk a lot about it here. In particular, the DOJ, FBI, and the CIA. In fact, Tucker asked him specifically about the CIA and the FBI and how badly they are interfering in our elections and interfering in our governance more than just elections. It's much broader than that. They're essentially controlling the government. So elections are just formality. But Trump came in and he talked about Liz Cheney. And he said, you know, every time we hear from her, she just wants war, 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 war. What is her problem with Trump? Why is she so upset with him? She didn't like him from the beginning and because she wants war and he does not want war. And so what has been going around here is Aaron Rupar and a bunch of the lefties in the Kamala campaign are all saying that Trump was threatening to eliminate her or something because he did make a colorful example on this. He said, why don't we put Put Liz Cheney, let's put her with, well, we'll play the full clip here, but this is what Liz Cheney says. This is how dictators destroy free nations. What are you talking about? Trump has no power right now. And when he was in charge, he wasn't prosecuting his political opponents, creating a fake committee that had no representation from the other side. And Trump talked about that last night. He said, you know, Kevin McCarthy called me and said it'd be a good idea to not put anybody on the committee. What a disaster that was. Insane. Even though they wouldn't put Jim Jordan or Jim Banks on there, still insane that Trump and McCarthy had a phone call 
all. And they're like, well, it's probably better. Let's just let them do whatever they want. Oh my gosh, what a blunder that was. But she says, they threaten those who speak against them with death. Never happened, Liz. He wasn't threatening you at all, you hysterical lunatic. We cannot entrust our country and our freedom to a petty, vindictive, cruel, unstable man who wants to be a tyrant. He doesn't actually, Liz. He's trying to talk about you being a tyrant, trying to send other people's kids and loved ones to die for your endless wars that you expect the American people to fund without any regard for the long-term consequences to them. So she's talking about it. Now, the actual clip is pretty obvious that Trump was talking about something much broader than this. And I thought that I had this queued up from our friend Viva, because I know Viva had this full one, full exchange. And let's see, he posted this one earlier today, right here. And he defined Rupar for us. He, he defined Rupar for it. And you can take a look at that definition and see if you agree. But here is the full clip. Okay, they took out a 20 second clip where Trump is saying that maybe Liz Cheney, if she's so interested in war and sending other people's kids to die, maybe she should go on the front line, see what it feels like before she sits behind a desk in Washington and just says, we have to fight for Ukraine no matter what. And Russia, Russia, Russia constantly faking stories with the FBI and the CIA to pin horrendous misconduct on Russia against the United States, instigating a world war against an innocent country, at least against those allegations. Not saying Russia is innocent, what superpower is, but they also have smear job that has been conducted by Hillary Clinton, by the FBI, by the CIA with their 51 letter. It's not never ending. Here's the full clip. And Cheney was so, th he said, I really want to thank you. He said, now I'm so glad that I actually endorsed you. It's amazing. He's talking about Dick Cheney, who called him after he pardoned Scooter Libby because Bush was too cowardly to pardon Scooter Libby. But that you would do this, and I didn't speak to him about it, but then, you know, go a couple of years forward or go now. And I don't blame him for sticking with his daughter, but his daughter is a very dumb individual, very True. dumb. She's a radical war hawk. Let's yep. put her with a rifle standing there with nine barrels shooting at her, okay? Let's see how she feels about it. You know, when the gun- Yeah, let's put her with a rifle in front of there with nine barrels shooting at her. Put her in a war zone is what he's talking about. See how she likes it. Guns are trained on her face. You know, they're all war hawks when they're sitting in Washington in a nice building saying, oh, gee, there we'll- Let's uh, let's send 10,000 troops right into the mouth of the enemy. But she's a stupid person. And I used to have meetings with a lot of people. And she always wanted to go to war with people. Wow. And so they've taken that out of context. They're totally melting down over it. It's hilarious. They're desperate. They're like, oh, maybe this will do it. Well, maybe the Puerto Rican comedian joke will do it. Maybe Trump saying, hey, you want to go to war? How about you go on the front line? And you can come back dead or burned or maimed and have your life deviated in horrendous ways for or what? Okay, and I think actually this resonates with more Americans than not. We're sick of war. Everybody's sick of war, but the Democratic Party is now the party of war, infiltrated by the neocons, in bed with the CIA, and this is the type of propaganda you get from them. Watch this. Kamala Harris and Donald Trump blitzing the West, sprinting a final bend before the final votes. Overnight, former President Trump now pledging to put Robert F. Kennedy Jr., who backed conspiracy theories what? around vaccines, <laughs> in charge of health care, including women's health. Oh. As Vice President Harris seizes on Trump's comments when he promised to protect women, whether the women like it or not. Insane. <laughs> Insane, okay. It, it literally reminds me of Fahrenheit 451. You remember that book? And it's scary because I think it was that book where they had the two candidates who were running and the media would have these things on those TV walls. Remember the book? They had these TV walls and you sit there like all kind of zoned out. And I think one of the races for the president or whoever was Winston Nobel. He was like the chosen candidate. Winston Nobel. Wow. He's like noble, isn't he? Wow. He's very Nobel. No, it's Nobel. Then the other candidate was Hubert Hogue, like H-O-A-G, right? So he's like, oh, he's kind of like a hog or something. And it's the same thing, right? Fiction becomes reality. And it's the same thing. Oh, Trump is working with RFK Jr., who's a conspiracy theorist, who's going to eliminate vaccines because he hates women. But Kamala is going to save women. All in one show. It's bizarre to watch it. The women who refuse to accept a future without reproductive freedom. It is in the men who support them. With reproductive rights at center stage, this morning, the report about one 18-year-old woman who died in Texas after her mother says she didn't get the care she needed because of the state's strict abortion ban. Here we go. Harris in Las Vegas with Jennifer Lopez firing up the crowd. I believe in the power of Latinos. Where are my Latinos at? As Mike Pence weighs in on the race. 
Trump in Arizona says he won't run again. It's never going to happen again. This morning, the path to victory for both candidates and the new warning about foreign election interference. <laughs> okay, so Trump was saying, yeah, this is this is a moment, right? This is a moment in time that is not going to be recreated again. And I think he's absolutely right about that. So they're spreading their propaganda around like you'd expect it to. Here was Ian Sams talking about this, saying that they wanted to put Liz Cheney in front of a firing squad. Kamala Harris, right? This is what her campaign is saying. That excerpt, which is Trump talking about Liz Cheney being a murderous warmonger is now saying Trump is talking about sending prominent Republicans to the firing squad. Okay, this is Kamala. This is her campaign. <laughs> says Harris is talking about sending someone to her cabinet. They're like lunatics. So let's put Liz Cheney with a rifle standing there. They're saying that's a firing line. No, it's it's just how about you have some skin in the game. It's not a big, difficult concept for them to understand. If you want endless war, why don't you have some skin in the game? So that the consequences also apply to you and you're not just sending other people's loved ones and their families to die. So here's Ian Sam's just a short little bit of it on the Mika Scarborough show. You heard the vice president talk exactly about things like this on uh, Tuesday night in her closing argument, Donald Trump is so all consumed by his grievances. The people who he disagrees with and who he sees as opposing him politically, he treats as enemies. He spent the last month what talking about, about the enemy from within the United States. Yeah, well, that's a very powerful quote in America, okay? Abraham Lincoln talked about it too. And many others have talked about it. And we have a responsibility to make sure that we are not being hollowed out by our own people, which is happening here, thanks to people like Ian Sams and his party, who are the people behind trying to throw Trump off ballots, behind prosecuting him in multiple jurisdictions, weaponizing every facet of the government to make his life miserable. And then they'll turn around and say Trump is acting like a dictator. Who's got people in prison right now? Their party. Where did Steve Bannon just come out of? A cruise? No. That was Fannie Willis and Nathan Wade who stole money to prosecute Trump. They're the ones who just got back from a cruise. Bannon just got out of prison because he was politically prosecuted by this party and this guy's boss, Ian Sams. So they just lie through their teeth, obviously. Cassie Hunt's the same thing, says Trump suggests Cheney should be fired upon, so they're all just circling the wagons. That's obviously not what he said, but they're getting nervous. You can see there are some big numbers and some big shifts that have come out. This is Ryan Jurdowski, who is over on X, and I do believe he was in the middle of a CNN kerfuffle, and he's doing some reporting on ballots returned in Pennsylvania, and so some of these numbers are looking pretty good. Now, the Democrats are still up there, but the numbers are big, big, big changes, so Cheney Change from the end of 2022, GOP is up 289,000 votes, right? Plus 289,000 votes, more than 2022. Now the numbers are still down from 2020, but the Dems are almost down a million votes, almost down three quarters of a million votes at this time. So big numbers uh, coming in. But again, the Democrats are still up, so nobody should be resting on their laurels a bit, right? They're still up 947 to 553, expecting huge election day turnouts on that to close the gap there. But they're scrambling, they're scrambling, says Republicans need the hope for a pickup over the weekend, says Republicans in Western Pennsylvania continue to exceed their mail, though that's mostly ex-urban and rural areas. GOP is close to exceeding 2020 numbers in a couple big counties. And so interesting numbers there. You can see they're going to do everything they can to elevate and escalate anything Trump says over these next couple days to rally and rattle people really to come to their side. We'll see if it works.